That's my birthday present from Daniel. Um, Hoping their tickets to Greece. Where's it from? I don't know, the boys took it off. I took it off. It's from Ukraine. <laughs> so, plane tickets? <laughs> A hat I can wear in Greece. <laughs> it's not a hat. It's not. Oh, my AK friend! He did it. <laughs> Great, I didn't gather eggs. So cute. It's really cute. It's yeah. a cute one. That's yeah, the best. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Not for a long time. hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is amomi aka petite diva and in this video we're discussing anna newman her ballerina farm and the times article that was published about her and her trad wife lifestyle now for those who don't know who anna newman is here is a brief recap now anna newman is a formal prima ballerina as people have said who had a paid right to juliet's as school of art um so when she was younger when she was about 21 she got into juliet school of art and then she met her husband now she was 21 her husband was 23 they are both from the mormon church and when the friend met um her husband was interested in her but she she was not interested in him now her husband's father is one of the owners of jet blue airline and some other airlines so he's rich 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 and because her dream was to be a ballerina she was not interested in him however apparently she was still communicating with him and then one day he did something that made her go on a date with him and also marry him but you'll find out what he did in a couple of minutes Anyway, they have a farm and also a business called Ballerina Farm. That Ballerina Farm has almost 9 million followers on TikTok. On that page, she shares her life, her traditional wife life, and she also shares things about the business and her life as a wife with eight children. Yes, she has eight children. And um, some of her videos have gotten a lot of people talking in a negative way and in a positive way. Any which way, the, the whole business and her lifestyle has gotten a lot of attention and also got the times to send a journalist to make an article on her. Now, that article was meant to share what goes on in her life, what goes on in her marriage, how she's coping as a traditional wife and how she's coping with her kid. a Juilliard trained beauty queen <laughs> married to a city boy end up on a farm so Daniel and I got married we were living in New York City and I was dancing and he was doing an internship and we got pregnant with Henry we had our first baby there and we were on the subway <laughs> one day and I was nursing and I remember Daniel looking at me and think, saying like I don't want this for our kids. Like his heart was not in the city. Although I could, I, I could have stayed, like I love the city. We started to fall in love with homesteads and farms. And we would see these families supporting themselves on pasture raised beef or pasture raised dairies. And that's really where it started, um, our love and desire for uh, making a farm of our own and supporting our family that way. Why is there so much controversy surrounding this TikTok mom? Ballerina Farm is led by Hannah Neilman and has almost 7 million TikTok followers who love watching her organic cooking videos and idyllic farm lifestyle in rural Utah, often featuring her husband and eight children. Hannah competes in beauty pageants with the most recent one being just 10 weeks after she gave birth. However, controversy erupted when it was discovered that Hannah's husband has a net worth of $400 million since his father founded five commercial airlines. Many 
viewers felt betrayed by this as farmers usually have to work from pasture for survival, whereas ballerina farmers doing so with immense financial backing. Some believe that Hannah presents an unrealistic treadwife image, which only looks this glamorous when you're rich. But the controversy intensified when people found out that they're Mormons. Mormonism is a family-centered religion that believes gender is eternal and that men and women have unique roles and duties ordained by God. That includes mothers being mainly responsible for raising children. And didn't Hannah echo this in that viral clip? When have you felt the most empowered? As I bring these sacred souls to the earth, after I hold that newborn baby in my arms. However, Hannah never talks about Mormonism, so doesn't that mean she isn't actively sharing it? This is the biggest controversies with influencers, Ballerina Farms edition. So Hannah Neumann, aka Ballerina Farms, who's also known for making those mouth-watering meatball subs in her, in her cozy kitchen, is also part of the Triad Wives or Traditional Wives on TikTok series. Some drama started to surface once people found out that her father-in-law, David Neumann, is the owner and founder of five different aviation companies like JetBlue, Azul, and Breeze Airways, basically saying that her family has a crazy amount of money. And here's where it gets interesting. People are calling out Ballerina Farms right now for faking her simple farm lifestyle. Ballerina Farm currently has 6.9 million followers on TikTok and almost 9 million on Instagram. This drama started to hit a peak once Hannah had her eighth kid and entered a pageant only 10 days after giving birth. This led critics to saying that her life is simply not as tough as other farmers. Some people are defending her, saying that she works incredibly hard despite her family's massive fortune. But other people are questioning if her farm life is legit or if it's all just a show for social media. What do you guys think? Now, I have not read the full um, article because I am required to pay to access the article to access the website. However, I saw clips and bits of it on the internet and I also watched quite a lot of people's um, reaction. And I have a lot to say about the whole situation, but let's check out what people had to say about her situation, the article and uh, everything about the ballerina farm. Has anyone else read the Sunday Times Ballerina Farm article that just released? Because this is insane. The interviewer goes to their farm, Ballerina Farm in Utah, and kind of basically shows what's going on behind the scenes from her TikToks and... It shows that, you know, even though she has money, um, a following on TikTok, a business, blah, 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 that she still <laughs> has to follow her husband, which is basically, you know, what the Mormon doctrine says. And especially after when she did that pageant 11 days after, it was her choice to do that, and people were, like, there were some people supporting her, but this still shows that she is still kind of being controlled by her husband, and I don't like it. I don't like it. Just wait. 
So the interviewer asks how it feels to have all these millions of eyes watching them. And Hannah says, I feel like we're doing what God wants. And then Daniel says, we're on his errand a little bit. And then Hannah repeats, we're on his errand a little bit. So it's kind of giving Stepford wife. And then the interviewer asks, um, how do you feel about being called a trad wife in the trad wife movement? And then Daniel answers. And he says, we're, we were already together doing what we are doing. And then trad wife came along. We can't help it. This is what we are. If we're trad dad, trad wife so be it and then hannah kind of disagrees and she says i don't necessarily identify with it because we are traditional in the sense that it's a man and woman we have children but i do feel like we're paving a lot of paths that haven't been paid bo paved before she is kind of right we are normally tread wives did not bring an income to a family only the husband did she is bringing a lot of business with her TikToks, and she's the face of Ballerina Farm. But still, <laughs> she kind of still follows her husband, repeats what he says, kind of agrees with him. Sometimes, you know, like this, she didn't really agree with it, but... She doesn't want to be too disagreeable to what he says. She It gives off the sense that she just wants to not blindly follow him, but kind of, you know, follow his path. And he's the leader. I don't know. It's just weird. I feel like Daniel is, you know, saying this stuff just to say this stuff. Like, the interviewer asks, is the husband the head of the household? And he says, no, we're co-CEOs. And Hannah says, yeah, we're co-CEOs. But still, based on what the interviewer experienced in this article, it doesn't really come off as that. Ballerina Farm picked her bed and now she's got to lay in it. And uh, that's not your problem and you shouldn't feel sympathetic for her because she didn't get to finish Juilliard. This is going to be a really dialectical take and you're going to need to be able to know that two things can be true at once to be able to hear my point. It is sad that she wanted to be a ballerina and some man came around and married her and got her pregnant immediately and now she lives on a farm where she does all of the work and for a gift she got a fucking egg apron instead of a trip to Greece even though her husband owns an airline. It's sad that the reason they're dating is because she told him what flight she was going to be on and he creepily got a seat right next to her. That's some sort of weird coercion. And it's sad that she thought that she had to push out a baby and then go to a pageant two weeks later. That's got to be some sort of patriarchy rot or something. It's sad that she was happy she got to give birth alone in a hospital because she got to get an epidural because her husband wasn't there to dictate her doing a natural birth. It's sad, but women like Hannah from Ballerina Farm, I'll show you the article. These women benefit from everything feminism has done for them, yet they go against feminism and then expect feminists to save them when they're stuck in their f fucking shitty patriarchal relationships. What I mean by that is it's usually like con conventionally attractive white women who get stuck in these horrible abusive relationships because their pretty privilege and their white privilege worked for them up into a certain point. She was able to attract a rich man who knew what he wanted and pursued her. That's a beautiful privilege. She was able to build a large following based off being a traditional woman. And she was able to benefit off conservatives and trad wife and Christianity and Mormons. But then when she has to face the repercussions of that very patriarchy that she is upholding, then it's a big deal. We all need to rally for her because her husband got her like an egg holder. Like she knew what she was getting into. She doesn't believe in birth control. They don't believe in birth control. So if she's stressed out by like eight to 10 kids or something, that is the repercussion of her following her morals. I am not judging her. She has the right to not take birth control and to have as many kids as she wants. Um, it kind of seems like her husband forces her to have kids though. So that is dialectical. She probably is a victim and a victim to her husband at that. 
but her meat packing husband who's super controlling who talks over her and who dictates where the conversation went in the interview and forces her to get pregnant and gets her pregnant every nine months that's who she chose to be with ballerina farm picked her bed and now she's got to lay in it so if you haven't seen that video i highly recommend you do go and watch it but i wanted to touch on this a little bit now, growing up in the Deep South, I feel like I have a slightly better understanding of this. Um, we don't necessarily have a... I don't think we have a high population of Mormonism, but Christianity, I live in the Bible Belt. Christianity is very prominent here, and I don't think people are quite understanding how deep the conditioning and the brainwashing goes. It is very difficult whenever you've been brought up your entire life being taught like you are a woman, this is your duty, this is what you're meant to do. It's very hard to unlearn those beliefs. And I mean, you have to give the woman credit. She did try. She tried to escape. She had dreams and goals and ambitions for herself. I agree with a lot in this take. I just feel like it's not very nu nuanced. I think is the right, right word I'm looking for. They touched on fem eh, feminism a little bit. Um, and I feel like in a different world, she would be a feminist. But I feel like it's so difficult to unlearn those values and then whenever you go someplace new and you meet somebody who's just like everybody you grew up knowing it can be very 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 difficult to separate yourself there's also a lot we as viewers don't know we don't know every aspect of these people's lives or what's going on in their heads but i could possibly see her being in new york city and meeting this man who is just like everybody from her hometown and being like well, maybe this is a sign. This could be God calling me that this is what I'm meant to do and I'm not meant to follow my dreams. Because as women ingrained in religion and being completely brought up that way, it's what you're taught. You're taught to follow God's calling and to follow your husband. The entire situation is very sad at the end of the day. It's very sad. And, you know, there's nothing we can do besides support her. Imagine you're married to the heir to a billion dollar fortune. Your husband's family is loaded. You have given this man multiple children. And it's your birthday and all you really want are tickets to Greece. Oh, you know, tickets to Greece. A hat I can wear in Greece. It's not a hat. It's not. Oh, my AK friends. <laughs> Great, they didn't gather eggs. You're welcome. Thanks, honey. You know what she wants. You can give her what she wants, and you give her something that she could do more chores with. I just saw an article about this content creator. Her name is Ballerina Farm. She has like millions of followers here on TikTok. And in the interview, she talks about how she basically works herself into exhaustion. Taking care of, I think they got six or seven kids, if I'm not mistaken. No nanny. They only have a, a maid that comes in once a week. She is so exhausted that sometimes she has to lay in bed for a whole week. He can't even give her for her birthday rest. The gift of rest. A man that only sees you in terms of your labor should be a red flag. I don't care if you're cooking and cleaning for him in a one-bedroom shack or if you're cooking and cleaning for him in a 10-bedroom mansion. It should still be a red flag. You are more than chores. You are more than labor. You are a person with thoughts and dreams and goals and aspirations outside of being a wife, outside of being a mother, and outside of what you can do for other people. I just realized what it is about traditional wife or trad wife content that bothers me and probably so many other women that it's hard to put into words. It's the same reason why I don't make that type of content, even though you could consider me a trad wife. I think it has to do with the fact that, look, you know, if you really want to talk about the experience of being a traditional wife, it doesn't look like this content that we're being shown with the 1950s housewife, like that niche, right? Where they're like cooking all day and they make this beautiful breakfast and they're all glam and their hair's in rollers and they get dressed up for their husband. Because so many of us and probably the majority of us, that is just not our experience as wives. Being a traditional wife is messy. It is little fingers under the door when we're trying to go to the bathroom. It's menti bees. It's, you know, the house being a mess when he gets home because they've gotten out every toy in the house because we actually played with them and they played with each other. It is 
homework, it's being late, it's shuttling kids from activity to activity, it's every time I need to do something for myself, my child didn't get something that they needed. This thing that's being put out on the internet for most of us, the postpartum period isn't us all dressed up in a bed looking beautiful, you know, with a photographer. This doesn't resemble the majority of our experience. So when we see this content, we have like this visceral reaction like, my life doesn't look like that. My life is messy. It's hard. It's postpartum depression. It's weight gain and getting used to this new body. It is trying to have a relationship with my husband and be a good enough parent at the same time. And this content does not reflect. It is not relatable. So if it's not relatable, then what is it? It's fetish. The way that I ran to read the Times article on Ballerina Farms... The article is called Meet the Queen of the Trad Wives and Her Eight Children, but what I'm really most interested in is the commentary on this trad wife thing and whether it's actually an empowering new model of womanhood or hammer blow for feminism because a lot of the proponents for trad wives say that there is really something sub so subversive about a woman performing domestic labor and making six plus figures because of it. That is something very subversive. I can get down with that. It really actually is a hammer blow to feminism because what is clear is that it is not a marriage of equals. Her husband says that they have to sacrifice a lot. He interrupts her the entire time. She says that one of the things that she gave up for this dream that they had of homesteading, or I don't even know what the terminology is, was dance. And as someone who also moved on, gave up dance um, to become a regular person, it really is just part of you. Hannah also goes on to talk about how she doesn't have any childcare. So in a lot of the conversations around trad wives, people are saying that there is a gaggle of nannies that have to be helping behind the scenes. These people actually don't have them. And her husband, Daniel, says that often Hannah is run completely ragged trying to maintain the household and be this influencer and create content. She gets so ill from exhaustion that she can't get out of bed for a week. Does that sound healthy? I don't think so. When she talks about how she had an unmedicated birth for almost all of her pregnancies, she waits until her husband leaves the room. And then she talks about how with her one child, Martha, she actually was delivered in a hospital and she had an epidural. She says it like it is a secret. This is the greatest article on Ballerina Farm and the trad wife thing. It just goes to show that Hannah Nealman is being corrected, interrupted, or answered for by her husband or a child literally all the time. If that sounds like a wonderful existence to you, great, but not to me. About six months ago, I shared a viral TikTok video where I argued that it was important to make a distinction between Ballerina Farm the brand and Hannah Nealman the person. I wanted to follow up on that topic because a few days ago, a new profile of Ballerina Farm came out. It was written by the writer Megan Agnew and it was for The Times. And it really illustrated the point that I was trying to make six months ago. The point being that someone can be the face of a brand, they can represent it, but they're not necessarily working alone and they are not necessarily calling the shots. On the working alone front, this profile dispelled the idea that Ballerina Farm is some home-run family operation. They don't have nannies, the writer maintains, but they do have a weekly cleaner. They have a full-time homeschool teacher who watches the kids and teaches them a Mormon Christian curriculum, and they have full-time farm employees, not to mention a creative director for their website. And then there's the question of who's calling the shots for this brand of Ballerina Farm. I'm not even going to answer this question. I'm just going to read you a series of quotes from this article, which you should read in full, and then we'll have a better idea of who's calling the shots when it comes to building the Ballerina Farm brand and the ideals and lifestyles that they claim to promote. Quote number one, Daniel wanted to live in the great Western wilds, so they did. He wanted to farm, so they do. He likes date nights once a week, so they go. They have a babysitter on those evenings. He didn't want nannies in the house, so there aren't any. The only space earmarked to be Nealman's owns, a small barn she wanted to convert into a little ballet studio, ended up becoming the kids' schoolroom. Quote number two. Daniel is a hands-on father, taking the kids out to the farm and doing all the laundry. The children appear to look after each other quite well, too. There are so many that they seem to have become an almost self-sustaining entity. 
Still, Daniel says, Nealman sometimes gets so ill from exhaustion that she can't get out of bed for a week. Quote number three, and this comes from the writer herself. I can't, it seems, get an answer out of Nealman without her being corrected, interrupted, or answered for by either her husband or a child. Usually I'm doing battle with steely Hollywood publicists. Today, I am up against an army of toddlers who all want their mom and a husband who thinks he knows better. And then I'm just going to relay a series of facts that were gleaned from the profile. They're not quotes. You should read the whole article, but they really highlight the point I'm trying to make here. Point number one, the only time that Hannah Nealman had an epidural was on the one birth that her husband wasn't there. Point number two, Hannah Nealman herself said that she wanted to date Daniel longer before they got engaged and then married, but he insisted that they got married quickly. How quickly? In a matter of months. And number three, a piece of information, this is just kind of contextual, the writer talks about going to the farm to meet Hannah and to speak with her directly, and instead she spends most of the day being guided around the farm by Daniel, who talks her through everything, she never gets a moment alone with Hannah, and that's how she leaves. I feel like what I'm trying to spell out here is pretty straightforward, but I'm just going to say it right now just to be abundantly clear. This is the ultimate example of what we're talking about when we talk about trad wives and domestic labor. We are talking about accounts that are designed to promote a, a type of Christian family value that, even if it promotes the woman at the front of the account, is designed to make women subservient. Hannah Nealman may be the face of Ballerina Farm. Her personality and her face may be the thrust of the Ballerina Farm account, the videos, the photos, but there is no proof whatsoever at this point that she is in control of the account, in control of the values, or even in control of her own life. This article is extremely sad to read. It's actually kind of hard to read. I've mentioned that I'm working on a book about this type of domestic labor influencer, and it's been a pretty weird headspace for me to be in. And this just like reminds me again and again that at the end of the day, these values are extremely recycled. What Ballerina Farm is doing is not original as an account. It is a direct marketing initiative that has been taking place for decades. And at the end of the day, even if the people who are the face of the account are not entirely aware of the endeavor that they are plugged into, they are still going to receive the same disadvantages from it. It's incredibly sad. I am rooting for her and I hope that she finds her way out of whatever position she has found herself in. And I'm incredibly grateful to the writer of this piece for exposing what is taking place on this ranch in an incredibly thoughtful, well-evidenced, clear way. I have no interest in growing up to be a trad wife mom, a Pilates mom, any kind of mom who loses their financial independence from their husband. Reading the article today about the mom who has eight children and isn't able to make a decision within her family about whether they hire a nanny or any kind of childcare, as her husband is the one who has all of the income, therefore he gets to make the decisions about how they spend money. And to me, this has been a long-standing concern of mine and this whole idea about women who don't want to grow up and work. I always wonder, what do you think about not having financial freedom? You have no income. Who do you think gets to make the decisions about where you live? The person with the job because if their job moves you're stuck following them and if you're comfortable with this kind of relationship and having a man's support congrats there's a man who's going to want you for that and they are not going to want to be in a relationship with me and you are going to find each other and make each other very happy but if you don't feel that way and you feel like I do I'm here to say there's a huge amount of people on this app I think who romanticize the idea of being a Pilates mom and I'm here to de-romanticize it. So I've been seeing a lot of coverage on the Ballerina Farm article in the Times here on TikTok and it's so crazy. The journalist definitely deserves a raise. She did an amazing job profiling this family and what really goes on behind the scenes and I encourage anyone who can read the article to go and read it and if not, there's tons of amazing reaction videos on TikTok. Um, just search Ballerina Farm. And my takeaway from this whole thing has been that Hannah Nealman is living proof that when you marry rich, it's a full-time job to be who they want you to be in order to earn your space at their family's table. And there's no such thing as a free lunch, especially if you're expected to make it from scratch. I was going to wait until morning, but it's almost 3 a.m. So I will just tell you what I think now because I can't sleep anyway. When it comes to ballerina farms, I initially responded to this and I said that I hadn't read the article and I wasn't going to because I felt like she had a sadness in her eyes I didn't want to understand. And I'm 100%, I might 100% might be reaching, but the first time I came across her, I stumbled on her page and I thought, oh my God, I love that they live on a farm. And then I very quickly realized it was not for me because she has eight children and her husband does not believe in outsourcing help. 
Do you understand how crazy that is? And I don't know if you grew up in large families, even though I would say it was my large extended family because I only have one sibling. You very quickly realize what it is like for the children involved in large families. You have a combination of children who are forced to be parentified and then combination of children who are forced to never grow up. Like, And then you have the children in the middle that just disappear and blend into the background. It, is, it did not sound like an ideal situation for the parents. It did not sound like an ideal situation for her because she just wanted to dance. Like She was a ballerina and a beauty contest model. Like This babe is having eight babies with no epidural. I don't want to touch that at all. But one thing I will say is when I responded to you initially and I said she has a sadness in her eyes, I don't want to understand. I recognize that because that is one of my biggest fears about being a traditional wife. I, I'm not necessarily a traditional woman, but I grew up and was raised by traditional women. My grandmother did the thing. My mother did the thing. And I watched these women pay the price for doing the thing. So that absolutely terrifies me. And I'm sh sure I love my father, but at the same time, like, you look in your mother's eyes, you look in your grandmother's eyes, and you see that pain and anger that they try to hide for your sake so that you can be happy and comfortable in their presence. And you register it in your mind. So every time you look in a woman's eyes and you see it, you remember it. Do you understand? And again, I could 100% be reaching by saying this, but that's what I saw. Like the second I looked at her page, I spent a couple seconds there and I got the fuck out. Like they lost me very quickly. Eight children with no outsourced help. And yes, they have a cleaner, but no outsourced help. This baby is making cheese and milking cows. <laughs> I will not read the article, I have not read it but what I will say is every single time I've seen her in the same space with her husband she seems absolutely terrified she seems absolutely anxious she seems like she is flustered and every single time I've seen her by herself she seems like she's in her element I just stumbled on a video of her dancing in a field that is the pain of a dream that's going far away as far as I'm concerned like watching a dream sail away I'm confused why everyone's shocked about that article about ballerina farm actually living the trad wife reality so y'all saw a woman with eight kids milking cows on a farm and didn't think that she was actually living that in real life i get people cat for the internet but you can't one thing you can't fake is is eight kids like that was her actual reality and she's not a victim she chose that for herself she knew she went to juilliard she knew she wanted to be a ballerina she knew she was good at it and she still chose to give that up to go be a wife. Like, that's just the reality. No one plucked her out of her dance recital and put her on a farm and impregnated her eight times against her will. She chose that for herself. And I also don't like that the woman that wrote that article doesn't seem to be getting the, the smoke that she deserves. Because <laughs> I get that's what journalists do. They don't tell you their biases and their true intentions around their articles. But that was just messed up. Because I'm sure if she would have went there and told them exactly why she was writing or interviewing them, they wouldn't have been a part of that interview. Okay, so I don't know where to start from. A lot of people had things to say that there were so many people that were responding to the article. There were so many people that made videos. I could not keep up with everything. But um, from what I've seen from the article bits that I posted, I don't know. I don't know if I should feel pity for her or if I should just say that's the life she chose. Now, I said that she um, is a mormon and he is a mormon. And um, from what I've seen about mormons, they really like put a lot of emphasis on the women um, looking forward to marriage uh, more than them being independent the first mistake i feel that she made was still communicating with him when she said she was not interested but when you look at the fact that they are both mormons and they're probably maybe from the same church in the same area i don't know but maybe that's why she was still like talking to him and that's why he had the audacity to um set up a plain date because he's one of the heirs to jet blue um, was it airline so he was able to pull string to be by her side um and then did the first date 
first date in my own opinion i married her within three months of them having the first date so with her communicating with him even though she said she was not interested he was able to get the first date and he was able to trap her he knew what he wanted like he said he already knew from the first time that he was interested in how he was going to marry her so just like he knew he had to do everything fastly and that's why he got her pregnant within six months of them um, married while she was already a student at the Juilliard School of Arts so I think the man was very deliberate in trapping her and I don't know if I'm going to say that um, she was blinded or something because like I said she grew she's a mormon and in that their mormon church they lay emphasis on girls being married and having a happy marriage and having children so I feel like she gave up a dream to be a ballerina because she felt like oh that at the end of the day she still wants to get married she wants to have kids and here was someone that was already rich she did they don't have to struggle like that and maybe she felt like he would allow her to um continue with juliet after she had given birth to the first kid but definitely that's not what happened because within four years they had already had like three kids and uh, now she has like um eight kids and from some of the things that the journalist wrote in the article it looks like he's looking for more kids and i'm like are you are you okay now for the husband i personally feel even though i don't know a lot about him that he's a very wicked person he doesn't like her he likes that she is by his side she likes he likes that she gives him children he likes that she's hard working she's doing things in the house she's making food from scratch and everything but he doesn't like her as a partner he doesn't like her as a human being i don't know if it is all of them in that mormon church but from all the people that i've talked especially the ex trad wife or ex mormon that i've talked it looks like they view women as breeding and walking too just like an animal just like a horse just like a cow just like a bull honestly because this woman had eight kids and almost all her kids she had to have the kids without any pain medication epidural and the only time that she um, had epidural um was the time that he was not around he was not in the hospital so she maybe they asked her if she wanted and she said yes and in the article she said it felt good so if he was there she was not going to get the opera for that one i don't understand eight kids eight birthing process i want to know the type of bible they have in that church because um anyway with eight kids she has no nanny like i don't understand with eight kids she's supposed to, she's entitled to two nannies or three nannies now the article said that they have a cleaning lady that comes and cleans and then leaves they also have a homeschool um teacher i'm surprised they have a homeschool teacher i would have thought he would have said she should homeschool them because the way he is acting is very very terrible anyway she had they have a homeschool teacher but she doesn't have any nanny she doesn't have any cook she's entitled to a cook she's entitled to a nanny because she has a lot of boys and boys eat like crazy now now the children are i think they are all below um teenage years and whatever they've not gotten to the 16 17 15 years when they are that age is she going to be preparing food from scratch for all of them like that because you don't boys can eat boys can eat and she'll be the only one that will do everything for two eight children that's pure wickedness as i said i don't think he likes that i don't think he loves that he's just he just likes that she's in the corner she likes he likes that she's pretty her body is that and she he feels like oh i've gotten this um trophy in my um cabinet another thing that really annoyed me that also annoyed a lot of people was the fact that on her birthday um he gave her a gift you can see that when she was opening it she was really excited thinking it was going to be the gift that she wants which is a trip to greece and this man had the audacity 
the oh i'm already getting angry the audacity to give her an egg apron and the egg apron is from ukraine and it was like oh and everything and it was like he was expecting that she should be excited she should um thank him bow down and thank him and she was saying thank you and i was like I don't get it. This man is rich, rich. His family is rich, rich. It's a different case if you cannot afford it. This man is rich. This is the reason why I keep on saying in some of my videos is that I don't like to look at the financial worth of a guy. I like to look at the financial habits towards me, like how generous is he towards me and towards other people. And a lot of people, in one of my videos, people are like, ah, if he's not rich, he cannot uh, be generous or something. I said, there are some people that don't have a lot of money but you will see that they will try to give you gifts that you would love give you things this man is rich and very stingy very wicked towards his wife like i said he feels it seems like he's looking at her as a breeding tool as a working tool something that is making money for him something that is just taking care of his offspring he doesn't view her as a partner he doesn't view her as a human being that is my own personal opinion looking at everything that is going on now concerning their business ballerina farm a lot of people were like oh that she owns the farm she owns the business now from the videos i saw um it seems like the business is doing well and um, that business has uh, employees he has employed some people and i feel like they have employees because that is a business and is bringing money and the business is in his name now people are saying that the business is um owned by the two of them personally personally i don't think that that business is owned by the two of them now she might she is the face of the business she is probably the one that is giving ideas um to him and the other people she's probably running the show but that business legally is his own you guys this is a really big deal hannah nealman is not the owner of ballerina farm here's the utah llc report i pulled it this morning and you'll see right here the farm is owned by daniel hannah's name is nowhere nowhere in any of these documents now hannah may have other ownership options not listed on the filing that are part of their internal operating agreement but Daniel right here, Daniel is the owner of Ballerina Farm. And I know this is unrelated, but I can't help myself because we were just catching up on The Bachelorette last night. Daniel with short hair just gives major Devon vibes. Prove me wrong. As the world dives into the Times article, one of the things that everybody's talking about is how Daniel seems to interrupt and take over ownership of everything. Even taking the journalist who was there to interview Hannah for a tour of ditches in the dairy. Well, Hannah's inside fixing lunch for the kids. And one of the reasons why this article has us so riled up and why we're all talking about it is that we all see Hannah as this girl boss. And so now we're engaged in these conversations that on one hand are like, what a jerk Daniel is and how do we free Hannah? And on the other hand is, well, choice feminism and she looks happy and she has a nice life. And that is exactly the conversation that entities like the Mormon church want us to be having about women like Hannah, which is a life that I personally know all too well as a 24 year Mormon trad wife, micro influencing homesteader. What looks to us like a girl boss, living the life of her dreams, raising babies, working hard on this big, beautiful farm and running this amazing TikTok account. It's honestly just smoke and mirrors and it's exactly what the mormon church wants people to see now before i saw the video where someone actually checked the listing to see whose name is on the listing where is only his name her name is not there okay. um personally i was not surprised that her name is not there because i have a video where i discussed about an ex trad wife who was also an ex mormon who was with her husband for a long time and then when she got tired of everything she left and she left with nothing because while they were married she didn't even have a bank account yes because it seems like a pastor or the elders told her that a wife having a, a woman should not have a bank account that woman also talked about the fact that they had businesses that she was really actively working on it and she was one behind it but all the money went to her husband all the registration the business registration everything about the business 
was in her husband's name so when she left the marriage she practically left with nothing and she could not get a college education because as a mom on the like i said it's like they view women as just pre breeding and working tools so they don't some of them don't get an education and she, since she married early she um she was supposed to be taking care of the kids so she never went to college so she came out of the marriage without any work experience any college education so personally when i saw the video um that said that her husband is the one listed on the um company document and i was not i was not surprised because of that video i don't get it i really don't get it is it like these people hate women in that church i don't get it i don't get why some of them see women as just tools animals that they can just use for breeding and to work to bring them money but no form of independence they don't allow the women to have things that they will value personally that is not indoctrined in their mind because sometimes they be thinking oh this is what i want but actually it might be what uh, what the church what the other members think they should want now before this article came out before the backlash from the article um this lady hannah Newman, had her own personal tiktok page now i saw it this is not i saw it in the comment i saw the personal page because that personal page has like 1.5 million um followers while their ballerina farm page has like almost 9 million followers i saw that page now when i was prepping for this video i went back to the page and I noticed that the name has been changed to Ballerina Farm. So now Ballerina Farm has two TikTok page. Now, to me, I feel like the husband has taken control of her personal page. But, yes, the but, the husband has his own personal page. I don't understand what's going on. Now, I checked the brand page and I checked the personal page that has now become a second brand page. And I saw there was a new post. And it was about their dairy night and they, their dairy date night and everything. And I was like, this looks like um, damage control to me. It looked, the video looked very fast. It looked like they were trying to say, oh, there's nothing wrong with our marriage. That the guy is a good guy. And we are enjoying ourselves. And it just, it just had damage control tactics all over the whole thing. Did y'all catch what Ballerina Farm's husband just did? Ballerina Farm. The final saga. Ton of questions across my videos on whether Hannah, Hannah, this is Hannah, who we've been talking about the last few days, if she uh, is okay. Seems like she's still with us. This is a post taken today, Sunday, July 28th. Um, she posted it eight hours ago. And what I feel like we are in is the era of damage control. It turned out to be a little harder than that. Daniel is very involved in the brand. In fact, he kind of leads it. Hannah seemed to be the sort of face. No. Didn't I say it was giving Ike and Tina Turner? <laughs> if you have not seen What's Love Got To Do, you know what? Go watch an Ike and Tina Turner interview. Ike is very leading. <laughs> and if you don't want to do that, go watch What's Love Got To Do With It. It's a great depiction. Now, the couple, neither Hannah or, nor Daniel, has addressed the article still. They've kind of been going on, living their lives, but today is a bit different. We gotta give Daniel that smile. I don't want my... Baby, they both look like they don't want to be around each other. The fake smiles from the both of the... Whew. Um, here's another one. And mind you, this was posted today. Oh, by the way, do you see the love you? This is the damage control I was talking about. It's like, all right, let's do a little thing. Look at the camera. Kissy kiss. It's a long kissy kiss. And then the way he just kind of like, what? We also see her mom on her Instagram. Granted, it's an Instagram story, but uh, yeah. Remember when I said, as, and not just me, but also publications were like, there is no essence of her family really too much on her Instagram, aside from when her grandmother and I think her father had passed away. So it's almost like, let's try to clean this up now. I'm personally glad that I'm not the only one that felt like it was um, a damage control. 
because the whole changing of Hannah Newman's um, personal page to Ballerina Farm and then all the videos, she even deleted some videos. On her personal page, the video of him giving her the egg apron was there and some other videos and I feel like it has been deleted because a lot of people were abusing him a lot of people were calling him out if you even check the page their ballerina page you will see people writing greece greece take her to greece 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 because everybody was like she wants to go to greece and it's not as if you cannot afford it you can even take a private plane you can enter your jet blue airline nobody will be there only you guys will go it is something you can afford and you give an egg apron any which way in summary i don't like the guy i think he's very wicked i think he's very controlling i think he doesn't like his wife he just uses her as a breeding to be because in the article the journalist was talking about the fact that she saw their passenger van and that she was asking did they intend to fill it up i think it was a 15 passenger van and he was saying something like he doesn't know and the wife was saying no that we are kind of tired i'm like what do you mean he doesn't know Either he's still going to insist that she will give birth to another child, or maybe we can get another child from somewhere because I don't understand. So I feel like he really doesn't like her if he's expecting her to have another child after eight children. And even after it was said that in a week she might not get up because she's feeling very exhausted from taking care of eight kids, you still want to add another one. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, that's wickedness, pure wickedness. That's not a partner. That's not someone that loves you. That's someone that wants you to suffer because that is just terrible. As for Anna, um, I'm hoping that she will find joy and peace in all that is going on because I really hope she gets like help that she needs to like just reduce some of the workload. I hope this backlash will allow him to actually um, get nannies and cook to help her because the fact that he says he doesn't believe in outsourcing help is just terrible in my own opinion anyway i hope that she gets help to help reduce the workload that she has so that at least when she feels exhausted when she's not in a good mental state she can rest without feeling guilty she can know that there has, there's somebody to help um also i don't know how she's going to get financial freedom I hope one day she gets um, a bit of financial freedom. I, I hope she gets to a point where she can have something to call her own because I know that she wanted to have a, a studio where she would dance because I know that I think that she feels joy when she's dancing, which is why she started doing um, a pageantry. Since she cannot do ballet, she shifted to pageantry and i think she liked it I, I hope she finds something that will give her joy that it's just for her not for her kids not for her husband just for her because sometimes you have to be selfish yes you have to do some things for yourself some things that will give you joy so i hope she finds that and for her coming out of the marriage i don't know because it's going to be such a disaster he might drag her through hell and back eight kids he might take the kids he might leave the kids and he might not want to pay child support he might not even give her a business her account is already gone in my own opinion so she's going to have to start from scratch and then the business is in his name i don't know what the law is in that place but uh it's going to be such a struggle if she eventually leaves him but i don't think she's going to leave him because like i said she's a mormon and maybe the church um, elders our parents and everything will tell her no don't leave this is the devil and everything and everything so i don't know how things are going to work out for them but i wish her all the best any which way that's my thought about hannah newman her husband Daniel Newman and the ballerina farm and all that's going on with their eight kids and their life and the article that was from Times. Now I don't know what you guys think about this whole situation. Um I would love to hear your own opinion about everything. 
what do you think about Anna Newman giving up her dream as a ballerina to be on the farm and have eight kids? What do you think about the husband? What do you think about the article? Have you read the article? Do you think that the journalist was biased? Do you think that the journalist was not biased? Um, do you think that people supporting her are right? People um, dragging her husband are right? I would love to hear your thoughts about this whole situation. So please leave your comment in the comment section so that we can get this discussion popping. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like videos such as this and you are not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing by clicking on the red button that says subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell notification icon by the side so that you're notified anytime I upload videos. Now, with all that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.